there's that. Let's get to the next question. What's the next one? Yeah, and I think this leads perfectly because mm -hmm. the next question is, what if a client requires some kind of consulting? How do you blend coaching into the session? So now we are like kind of shifting around and having a look at, we've got the coach who's all in space, the consultant who may be feeling that pressure to be an expert or add value. What does this look like? I think it's hard to do, honestly. I think it's hard. Um, I think that uh, in my work, in most of the work that I did was with students, but I also did some work in the executive coaching world. And my best practice on this is uh, I always was a coach first and you know, consultant second type of thing. If there's something that I thought someone should do, or this is best practice, I would share, this is best practice. And I would say what it was, and then I'd ask them, what do you want to do with that knowledge? Or what do you want to do with that? Uh, I think this comes up in a lot of other places too, where, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, as a coach, you, you need to have that as, as a coach. Like you need to give yourself permission to be able to do that, um, especially if clients are, they just, they don't see a blind spot they have, or they're just unaware and they just don't know. It's really helpful to be able to tell people that. Um, consulting, when I've seen people do it really well, blended with coaching, uh, they have really strict boundaries around what, you know, this is a consulting session, this is a coaching session, this is consulting time, this is coaching time. I think it's too hard to try to mix or try to go with either at the same time because it, it doesn't, uh, create, um, it's like this, it's like, they're, they're two different songs. They're two different genres of music and you can mix the two together and this close together, but why you don't want to do that. It's better just to stick with one, you know, and then end it and then next and clarity and transparency, all of those things I feel like are more useful. Uh, I very rarely hold I heard somebody in a session mix consulting with coaching well in the same session. I like what you're saying about boundaries. I think keeping it separate. I mean, I, I'm a coach, I'm a consultant, I'm a mentor and I'm a trainer. I wear lots of different hats. So for me, I'm, I'm a business is called coachability. I'm always using a coaching approach or coaching tools or coaching questions. And I'm always, curious yet one of the things that i found and i will say to anyone else who's a consultant or mentor out there is being mindful of opting to go with your consultant's hat all the time because for some people it's very comfortable to want to be in that place as an expert and Sometimes even when I'm meeting with clients and like we're designing a life, we're designing a program and they've said to me, I would want some mentoring or consulting sessions. It, I ask coaches to kind of discern and go with their gut to kind of not go to consultant mode too soon because you get into bad habits. So practice being a coach first and really strengthen that because that's where the beauty of the change and impact is. And it makes me think of a client that I was working with who, you know, we did a lot of coaching sessions and she said she wants some mentoring and consulting as well. But we get to the beginning of the session and, you know, what would you like to focus on today? And she said, I just want you to tell me what to do today. Okay. I just need some guidance and, you know, I need some advice and strategy. Yet my gut told me that there was something else. It would have been so easy to just go into consultant mode. Um, but I remember saying to her, what's different about today? And that was the best question I could have asked her because she just, she just let out a sign. She said, I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I'm tired of being the one to tell everyone else and be the expert. And actually that led us into a coaching session and she didn't need a consultant at all. Right. I think both, both modes are useful. I, in my, the most effective I've seen them work together is when I, I know I can be hundred percent in coach mode and they're working with another professional who's a consultant. So they just know this is the consulting time. This is their coaching time. That, that's what I feel like is best practice, but 
I am a coach trainer. So <laughs> I feel like I'm... <laughs> uh, it's different. It's different from therapy. It's different from consulting and counseling. All of it, like, they're all useful. I feel like that they are very different in, in the, the base fundamental assumptions that are made uh, from the practitioner standpoint. And it's too challenging, I think, for the client to have those base fundamental assumptions from the practitioner standpoint switch during like mid-session. It's, it's just really hard. So I don't really recommend it. I think if you are in coaching mode, stay in coaching mode with you know a direct communication different periods. If you're consulting, stay in consulting mode with coaching question follow-ups. That's what I feel like is the best. Yeah, um, but okay. I'm sure others might feel otherwise. So I'm open to learning too. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you. As I say, I have clients who we have specific coaching sessions or we have specific mentoring or consulting sessions. If somebody wants it in a session, we'll design a mini alliance right at the beginning. And I'll say, okay, first 30 minutes, I'm going to be in coach mode and we will do that. And then I have to literally imagine myself switching gear and switching hats next 30 minutes i'm going to be in that consultant or mentor mode i don't do it all the time and as i say you know you've got to really hold yourself accountable i love being a coach i love love being a coach so one of the things i know i have to be mindful of is not getting into bad habits in in terms of what i call bad habits they might not be somebody else's where i'm kind of mixing and matching and for me i'm taking the essence away of what pure coaching is, because pure coaching is really beautiful. 